Hello everyone, I'm Greg Karlovitz from the Hydrologic Engineering Center. Welcome to our course on statistical methods in hydrology. This video is part four of four on the topic of extreme value theory and we'll discuss the second extreme value theorem. Let's get started. Previously, we considered order statistics, more specifically, the sample maximum from non-overlapping blocks. One issue with doing this is that we often are throwing out data. In each block, there are sometimes events that are notable but are not the block maximum. Sometimes these secondary events are larger than some block maximum. However, when we use the first extreme value theorem, we don't consider these events. Instead, what happens if we throw away the notion of blocks and only look at all of the large events in our record, where large is defined as exceeding some threshold that we define? What we would have to ensure is that each of these events is independent, which is a little more work than when we use block maxima, which we assume are independent by design. When we collect all of the events in our record exceeding a threshold, where there may be anywhere from zero to several per year, we call this approach the peaks over threshold approach. When we count the peaks over a threshold, we wind up with a varying number of peaks per block. These are local maxima instead of the global maximum for the block. This means that instead of having the same number of peaks as blocks, we potentially have more or less than that depending on the threshold that we pick. When getting these local maxima, it's important to make sure that they are independent. For example, you wouldn't want to take both peaks of a double peaked flood hydrograph because they are likely to be strongly related. One consequence of working in this realm is that we're not working with order statistics anymore and the cumulative probabilities that we compute are not the complement to the AEP anymore. However, at the end of this discussion, we'll find out how to get back to the annual exceedance probabilities using a peaks over threshold model. For all of these floods that exceed some threshold that we use to define large events, we can build a model for how much the values exceed the threshold. The amount that the peak exceeds the threshold is called an excess, and it is simply the value of the peak, x, minus the value of the threshold, u. They'll have a minimum value of zero, and most of the values are closer to zero than a large value. In hydrology, the peaks over threshold model is also sometimes called a partial duration series, or PDS. The pickens balkema dehaan theorem, also called the second extreme value theorem, gives us the probability distribution for the values of those excesses. The bottom line is that if you select a sufficiently high threshold, the values of the excesses will converge to the generalized Pareto distribution, the generalized Pareto distribution is a three-parameter distribution where one parameter is the value of the threshold selected for a PDS analysis. The generalized Pareto distribution is named for Vilfredo Pareto, who was a civil engineer by trade, but more famously an economist who gave us the 80-20 theory of income distribution that shows up in many other applications as well. I think he kind of looks like he might work at that trendy microbrewery downtown. Kind of like that, right? Anyway, back to statistics. The generalized Pareto distribution's first parameter is the threshold used to compute the excesses. It also has a scale parameter and a shape parameter, making it a three-parameter distribution. The shape parameter controls the tail weight of the distribution. Much like the generalized extreme value distribution, negative values in the shape parameter have a heavy tail, a shape parameter equal to zero has exponential tails, and a positive shape parameter has a light tail. Notice that all three shapes for the distribution are very similar, mainly varying in their asymptotic approach to the right and their fixed lower support at the threshold value. There are three challenges in using peaks over threshold, or PDS, in real life. First is the problem of choosing a threshold. There's a trade-off between how high the threshold is and how many sample values you get. However, a higher threshold means better agreement with the generalized Pareto distribution for the resulting excesses. This sometimes requires iterative testing of the threshold and fit to find the sweet spot. Some studies have suggested how to choose a threshold based on the resulting average number of events per year after setting it. Sometimes, it's recommended to choose the threshold to be equal to the minimum annual maximum value so that all of the data in the annual maximum series are contained in the peaks over threshold data as well. Second, it can be difficult to ensure that the peaks are independent, especially for stream flow. For precipitation, this is generally much easier because storm events can be separated by periods of no rainfall. 
In Streamflow, it generally requires setting a minimum amount of time between subsequent events and a value that the flow must go below between events in order for them to be considered independent. Finally, for many studies, the difference between an AMS and PDS analysis for the frequencies of interest may be small. This means that for some studies, the extra worth is just not worth it. However, depending on the kinds of data that you're analyzing, PDS can have benefits. One example is in a stream with annual maximum flows that are zeros, that is, the river sometimes goes dry for more than a year. This means that there are zeros in the annual maximum series. Using the partial duration series technique instead is only concerned with the situations where there are flood events. Let's look at a non-hydrology example of how the two extreme value theorems relate. Imagine you're out on a lake fishing for several days. Assume that the fish you catch from the lake are a random sample of all of the fish in that lake. There's a parent population, f of x, that describes the distribution of the length of all fish in the lake. Over those several days of fishing, you catch some number of fish in total, resulting in an average of lambda fish per day. If you track the length of the largest fish you catch each day, the distribution of the lengths of your biggest fish is asymptotically GEV distributed. If the Department of Natural Resources says you can only keep fish over a certain long length, then if you record the length of all of your keepers, the keeper length will be asymptotically generalized Pareto distributed. Now what you might also find is that your fish samples aren't well modeled by the GEV or GPA distributions. This could be for a number of reasons. First, the parent population of all fish in the lake is probably a mixture. There are probably several species of fish in the lake, each with their own distribution of lengths. Second, it's likely that the fish you catch aren't independent. You probably go to the parts of the lake with the best chances to catch a fish, which probably have some species more than others. And sometimes, you manage to catch the same fish twice. You may also only catch a few fish each day, especially if you're me, so the convergence and distribution hasn't quite happened yet. Your fish samples look more like the parent distribution of fish lengths than the GEV or GPA distributions. Finally, you are only fishing for a few days, so your resulting samples are probably small. An important question is that if you use a partial duration analysis, how do you get annual exceedance probabilities, which are needed for risk-informed decision-making? We recorded the average rate of events lambda because it can be used to convert between PDS and AMS analyses. This comes from an old paper by Walter Langvian in 1949, which still gets great usage today. You can get the value of the cumulative probability for an annual maximum distribution, also known as the non-exceedance probability, using the cumulative probability from the PDS distribution and the mean rate of events. A synthetic experiment will show this adjustment in action. We will generate 100 synthetic years, each containing 50 events from a standard normal distribution. Then we will fit an AMS model to it using the GEV distribution and a PDS model to it using the GPA distribution. Then we will use the Langbian adjustment to convert the PDS result to its equivalent AMS frequencies. The AMS extracted from our sample is shown in black. The PDS for the exact same sample is plotted in red. When the Langbian adjustment is applied to each of the points in the PDS, they are plotted as magenta. The procedure showing that the results work is shown at the right. Suppose we are interested in knowing the AEP for the value x equals 3, except we only have the generalized Pareto model based on the partial duration series. In this sample, the cumulative probability is 0.9883. In the PDS fit, the annual rate of events is about 3.4 events per year. When using the Langbian adjustment, the CDF of the AMS is 0.9613. In this situation, we can check to see how well this agrees with an AMS GEV fit to the same sample. By plugging the adjusted CDF value of 0.9613, into the inverse CDF for the AMS GEV model, we get 3.03, .03, which is close to 3, but slightly different due to sample error. The samples aren't big enough to perfectly estimate both the PDS GPA and AMS GEV models, so there's a slight discrepancy in the conversion. There is a more direct way to go between the PDS GPA model and an AMS GEV model that bypasses the adjustment. 
It requires fitting the PDS model and getting the mean rate of events and then converting the parameters from the GPA to the equivalent GEV AMS model as above. C, alpha, and kappa are the parameters of the PDS GPA model. Lambda is the mean rate of events for the partial duration sample. The same symbols with the star are for the AMS GEV distribution. It's easy to convert between the two, especially because of the way that these distribution functions were formulated, resulting in the kappa parameter being equal for the two. In this video, we discuss the second extreme value theorem. Three key points to take away from this video are, the second extreme value theorem gives us a model for the frequency magnitude relationship for all independent extremes exceeding a threshold. Partial duration series tend to converge to the generalized Pareto distribution. And we are able to use a PDS model to make inferences about annual frequencies, which is important for when we need annual exceedance probabilities. Thanks, and come back soon to learn about other topics in our statistical methods and hydrology course.